The contractors who run the Nevada National Security Site, formerly the Nevada Test Site, have been scrambling to find new missions to keep the facility alive. And with its wide open spaces and secure borders, it's the perfect place for covert training. But how would taxpayers feel about using public dollars to train foreign insurgents, including some who are officially considered to be terrorists? George Knapp of the I team is here with the story. This stuff's kind of tricky. It's never clear how it's going to turn out, and yeah. sometimes such operations can backfire. Example, in the mid-80s, America trained and armed Afghan, Afghan rebels to fight against the Russian army. Those same Afghans later joined the Taliban and have used the training we gave them to kill American soldiers. Nationally known journalist Seymour Hersh reported this month that our government paid to train Iranian provocateurs, presumably to cause trouble for the current government of Iran. But it turns out our own government can considers these same guys to be terrorists. The paratroopers being dropped lazily from an Air Force transport plane on a recent afternoon don't necessarily have to be Americans, even though the exercise was carried out above the Nevada National Site. The test site has emerged in recent years as a top training facility for all sorts of classified programs, including special ops teams and anti-terror units. And it appears foreign operatives are a big part of that the, mix. Um, the first units of the NEK to show up in, in, in Nevada, late 04, early 05, and it was months and months of training. Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter Seymour Hirsch broke the story in early April, alleging that a rapidly anti-Iranian faction known as MEK was at Area 12 on the test site for months of special forces training. Area 12 has been used many times as a base for sensitive operations, including training for the agents who guard American nuclear weapons. It has barracks and facilities to house scores of troops, or in this case, insurgents. According to Hirsch, the training focused on high-tech communications tactics, the kind that involves spy drones, as well as explosives training, and he adds, enhanced interrogation techniques, which might explain why, as the I-team has reported, Nevada saw so many flights of so-called rendition planes, torture planes, during the same period. While Area 12 may have been the base for the MEK, it's likely the special ops training took place in areas 18 and 19, where the terrain is remarkably similar to that of Iran. Hearst reported the MEK training was overseen by the Joint Special Operations Command. A spokesperson for that group told us flat out, this is not true at all. The command was not involved in training MEK. So if it took place, another agency gave a cover story to the contractors who run the test site. It's not the first time Southern Nevada has been used for insurgency training. In the mid-80s, dozens of Mujahideen leaders from Afghanistan were trained in explosives, sniper techniques, and other guerrilla tactics out in Sandy Valley by decorated Green Beret Colonel Bo Greitz, the real-life model for the movie Rambo. They were then unleashed on ruts in Afghanistan. And just after the events of 9-11, the CIA trained Iraqi exiles, known as the Scorpions, at the test site. The CIA set up this black training camp, totally covert, totally secret, sabotage, assassination, and other aggressive actions to try to provoke a war with Saddam to destabilize his regime. All this was in 2002, long before, of course, the Congress had authorized the invasion of Iraq. The big surprise is not that training took place in Nevada, but who was being trained. MEK is listed by the U.S. State Department as a terrorist organization, and for good reason. For years, it was the paramilitary arm of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, carrying out bombings and assassinations. In the 70s, MEK assisted in the takeover of the American embassy and the hostage crisis. It is widely blamed for murdering American military personnel and contractors in Iran, and is widely despised. They're pretty much universally reviled by ordinary Iranians who don't like their own government, but really don't like the MEK because they fought alongside Saddam during the Iraq war. Hirsch believes the training of MEK probably ended with the Obama administration, but the operatives educated in Nevada are currently active in Iran and are believed responsible for a string of assassinations of Iranian scientists. In the U.S., MEK is spending huge sums to buy political support so it can be removed from the terror list and perhaps take over if the Iranian government is overthrown. Abdi says 
American support for MEK is a dangerous idea. If there's an appearance that the U.S. is standing with this terrorist group that ordinary Iranians have rejected, uh, it really plays into the propaganda of the Iranian government, which says the U.S. isn't on your side. Uh, the U.S. just wants to topple the Iranian government and doesn't care about the people of Iran. So it's a very dangerous thing to be playing with. The folks at the test site say they can't comment on this report about MEK training. They did tell us, though, those paratroopers we saw at the beginning of that story are from the 58th Rescue Squadron at Nellis. They just needed the space that day. Among the three dozen or so American politicians who ex have accepted big money from MEK supporters to say nice things about the group is former Homeland Security Director Tom Ridge. We called him to get his comment. He did not call back. There are uh, prominent people in both parties who think MEK might be our best option if there's a regime change inside Iran. But again, fomenting that kind of change is really dicey business. You don't know how it's going to end up. Yeah. A lot of extras on our website, by the way. Excellent. Thank you, George.